Hi everyone, I'm Fiona and I'm the Demo Site Manager for the Partridge Project in Scotland. Unfortunately, as I'm sure many of you will notice, we are undergoing a pandemic and so we're unable to undertake any farm walks this year. However, we're still really keen to tell you about what we've been doing here and so we decided to make a couple of videos just to show you some of the highlights. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the high quality habitat measures that we have in Scotland, the pollinator mix. Before I tell you about the pollinator mix, I thought it would be a good idea to tell you a little about pollinators themselves first. For those of you that don't know, pollinators are animals that help plants to reproduce by transferring pollen from one plant to another. This would be impossible without the assistance of pollinators and so they're a vital part of our ecosystem. We as humans would actually be at a major disadvantage if we lost them. As I'm sure many of you will know, pollinators include things you see every day such as bees, um, hoverflies, butterflies, but also perhaps some more surprising species such as wasps and moths. Unfortunately for pollinators, their numbers are actually declining at the moment. It has been found that about a third of the bee and butterfly populations are declining and a recent German study suggested that up to 75% of flying insects had decreased over the last 27 years. This is for a number of reasons, um, including a change in habitat, uh, use of pesticides, um, climate change and invasive species. The loss of pollinators is actually an important, particularly issue for farmers. Um, it's estimated that pollinators contribute about 15 billion euros um, towards the EU's agriculture output. Um, but they also bring many other benefits, including biodiversity and mental well-being benefits for other people. It's for these reasons that the Partridge Project is really keen to show people how we can help pollinators. And in Scotland, this is done through the establishment of the pollinator mix. At Balgoni, where I am today, the farmer John chooses to sow these mixes around the outside of his potato fields, which you can see behind me. The reason for this is that potatoes don't traditionally provide a lot of high quality habitat for farmland wildlife, and John's really keen to particularly improve the plight of pollinators, and so the establishment of these mixes just gives them a little bit of extra support during the summer months. These mixes are developed in partnership with the farmer, ourselves and other relevant experts and are constantly adapted as we look to improve them in the future. In addition to pollinators, this mix also has benefits for other farmed and wildlife. Birds such as the grey partridge can utilise this mix to help their chicks find food after they're born. As I'm sure many of you know, grey partridge chicks require a high protein insect rich diet and they require the right type of vegetation so that the chicks are able to feed. As you can see, the vegetation is relatively short and this means that the grey partridge chicks can reach things like sawflies and other insects relatively easily uh, compared to taller vegetation. This habitat is also um, maximised further through the setting of it next to suitable nesting cover. As you can see behind me, there's a lovely hedge and that hedge has some nice tussocky grasses underneath. This means that when a grey partridge nest hatches, the chicks don't have very far to go to start foraging and their chances of survival are increased. As you can hopefully see, there's a variety of different plants in this particular mix. When we started out, we just had four species in here. Uh, these were Phacelia, Buckwheat, Crimson Clover and Vetch. Uh, we've actually introduced oil radish and linseed into the mix this year. Uh, these plants both are great for replacing nutrients in the soil. And oil radish is also great for reducing soil compaction. As I hope you can see in here, the Phacelia is absolutely buzzing with all sorts of different pollinators, bees, butterflies, hoverflies, all sorts of things. What you can also see is that the vegetation isn't too dense. This means that the partridges and other species can wander around relatively freely without getting stuck and can escape from predators relatively easily. A new feature for Balgoni this year has been in the winter wheat fields. As I'm sure many of you in the UK will remember, this winter was exceptionally wet and this led to areas of the winter wheat fields having poor or little growth. Rather than leaving these areas to become bare or with poor quality weeds, John decided to sow the pollinator mix in these areas. This has meant that there's small areas of oasis in the middle of these fields which would otherwise provide very little high quality habitat. In addition to the benefits to pollinators and grey partridges which I mentioned earlier, this habitat is also great for other songbirds. I've seen linnets, goldfinches, skylarks and sparrows using this mix. 
And it's also great for the farmer too. This mix will replenish the nutrients in the soil and lead to hopefully a higher yield and productivity for next year. This means that's not only for benefits for biodiversity, but the farmer too. So in my opinion, it's a win-win situation and a very simple uh, feature to implement. I hope you'll agree that these mixes are a great way for increasing the pollinators on your land. In addition to this, they're also really good for grey partridges, songbirds and other wildlife and are a great way to improve the health of your soil as well. Thanks very much for listening everyone. If you'd like to support the project, you can actually buy this really nice pin badge that I'm wearing. Or you can buy the partridge booklet for your country on the relevant websites. If you'd like to find out more about the project, check out the Partridge Project website, or you can find us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Partridge Project. Hope to see you soon.